probably one of my favorite things to get at a restaurant is braised beef short ribs. I absolutely love them. And I'm sure you do too, because anytime I put them on a menu, they sell like crazy. Doesn't matter whether it's summer, fall, spring, they are extremely popular all the time. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make braised beef short ribs the way we do in the restaurants. And when we're done, you'll be able to knock this out at home like a pro. So let's start by talking about the tools we need. We need a really good cutting board, chef's knife, a utility or boning knife, meat fork, or you can use a pair of tongs. This is gonna be to turn the short ribs as they cook. A rondo and a kitchen cooking spoon. So to build the short ribs, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start with searing the short ribs, browning them off. So we gotta trim these guys up a little bit of salt and they're gonna go in the pot with oil and get them brown nice and beautifully. Now, our short ribs are what's called plate short ribs. They come from the plate area of the cow. That's on the underbelly. And they have an amazing amount of intramuscular fat. And this intramuscular fat is all gonna break down as the short rib cooks and kind of give that gelatinous, delicious, succulent taste and texture to the short rib. But if we take it just like this, and we leave this on and cook it, this part right here, the, all this connective tissue is gonna be really chewy and get caught in our mouth and we don't want that. So we're gonna actually clean these up just a little bit. Now to clean up our short rib, you're gonna take a nice sharp knife and come underneath. And you just want to knock that top layer of fat off and what's called the silver skin, which is this connective tissue. If you're buying these at home, I would imagine you could probably request this from a butcher to actually go ahead and trim these up for you. Now, oftentimes when you're cooking meat, you want to leave a little bit of fat on there to kind of help base the meat while it roasts. But for this, because there's so much intramuscular fat and you can see all this in here, all this marbling, these little white speckles are called marbling. Um, that is actually going to break down and cook with the beef. Plus, we're actually doing this in a liquid, so it's going to add even more moisture to the dish. Now, there is a difference between good fat and bad fat when you're dealing with short ribs and honestly, most meat. This kind of slimy, spongy fat, that's bad fat. You want to get rid of that. This harder, more clear white fat is good fat. So as this cooks, it's going to base down and actually add more flavor, but it's also going to add grease to your dish. So I'm going to knock the majority of it out just for good measure and to make sure that our sauce requires a little bit less work at the end. Check the underside too, because where the bone's connected to this, uh, there is often connective tissue. 99% of the time there will be connective tissue. And you wanna come in with your knife and just kinda of clean some of that up because again, these, this silver skin is gonna actually be like a rubber band when it cooks and it's not gonna give you that amazing you know, mouth feel, that incredible fall apart texture that you're looking for where you could just cut these with a fork. So you can see now I've taken the majority of the fat off, uh, the connective tissue. If you have little stragglers like this, it's not the end of the world. Uh, because again, you're going to pick that up in one chew. Backside is looking great. I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest of these up. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking these things are massive, right? Well, as a short rib braises, it loses about 50% of its volume by weight. So something to be aware of is, you know, while this is cooking, it's going to shrink down. So if there's two of you at home that you're making these for, you're going to need to cook uh, closer to two pounds of short ribs if you want to have eight ounces each of finished meat. Now, if you're doing this sous vide, it's a much higher yield, so you only lose about 30%. And I'll do a video in the future about how to sous vide short ribs because uh, the texture is unbelievable and there's all different methods, 24 hours, 48, 72 hours, and they all yield amazing results. So now that these things are all butchered, we're gonna have to season them up. So when seasoning my short ribs, I only use salt and pepper. The reason is we're gonna introduce so many other flavors into this and the salt is really all you need to make a fantastic short rib and to bring out that beefy flavor and do all the reactions that salt needs to happen for your palate. But if you start adding other spices, then when you add it to the braise and you're braising it, you're gonna lose a lot of that into the liquid itself. So starting with just salt is great. If you want to add other elements in the future, like say rosemary or uh, any other kind of a seasoning, you can do that later on when it's done cooking and when you're finishing the short rib. So to season, we're just gonna take some kosher salt and black pepper and give a fairly aggressive sprinkle. Now, I would season this a little bit heavier than I would if I was, say, putting this on a grill, because again, this is gonna go into a liquid, so a lot of this salt is gonna dissipate into the liquid and not adhere to the meat. So, I get fairly aggressive when I'm seasoning my short ribs. It's a very important step. I'll season these ahead of time, 
And then what I'll do is cover them in plastic, put them in the fridge for about an hour until I'm ready to start actually building the short rib braise. The next thing we're going to do is we have to cut our vegetables for the short rib because we're going to be braising this. This is a slow cooking process. You're going to cook at about 250 degrees for a good three hours. Um, so the vegetables we're using are what's called a standard mirepoix. Carrots, celery, onions, and then we use garlic. So to prepare this, we want a nice rustic chop on our vegetables. And this is very important because uh, these big chunks of vegetables are gonna give a stew-like kind of element to the dish where you're gonna have big, giant, soft, braised chunks of veggies in there. Probably, I probably love those more than I do the beef itself. So we're gonna come and cut our celery into nice big pieces. We're cutting them in big chunks because we don't want them to turn to mush while they braise, but we want them to get silky and sweet and delicious. Now our onion, we're gonna cut it in half, half again, and then just some strips. These are gonna break down when they cook, but the more the onion breaks down, the more natural sweetness is released, and that's gonna give an amazing depth and flavor to this dish. Finally, the garlic. I like to just run my knife through the garlic. So I just break it down a little bit with a knife just to kind of open it up and expose some of the inside of the garlic, which has a lot of the sugars in it, which is gonna caramelize and, and build and just add, again, another layer of flavor. Everything we do with this recipe has to do with adding layers of flavor to the dish. Now our mirepoix is cut. And I'm gonna set this aside until it's time to braise. Now I told you I'm doing a big batch here. You're doing this at home. You might do one onion, two carrots, two stalks of celery. Me, I'm cooking a lot of short ribs, so I'm gonna make this a slightly larger batch. Now to braise the short ribs, we're using chicken stock and you want a good gelatinous chicken stock. If you're inclined to make your own, um, it's really kind of the best way to go. But a great chicken stock is gonna make all the difference in all of your cooking. And if you look, this one wiggles a little bit. It's a little bit gelatinous, it's thicker. That's what we want out of a chicken stock. You want that bone gelatin to really thicken up and give a really amazing mouthfeel. And it's also gonna hold things when you add it later, like butter, stuff like that. It's gonna mount it a lot better. The next product we're using is a veal demi-glace. And veal demi-glace is basically veal broth, veal stock that has been reduced down and reduced down so that all the gelatins fortify, uh, all the flavors fortify. It's really amazing when you're doing any kind of a braised meat or if you're making a sauce for say a steak or something like that, uh, it's outstanding. If you're gonna make it yourself, it's about a 48 hour process to make veal demi glace at home. If you wanna buy some, I'll link up some great products below uh, of some really awesome demi glaces that are clean, delicious, very versatile. Uh, I absolutely love using them. Normally we make it for here at the club. And the other ingredient is red wine. And uh, you don't need an expensive red wine because you're gonna cook all the flavor out of this. and. If whatever red wine you use, you're going to reduce it down so much that if you're using, say, a Barolo, well, you might get a little bit more depth and flavor. It's not anything that most people are going to notice. So for general cooking, we use a much less expensive, a much more cost-effective bottle of wine, uh, and it definitely does everything we need it to do. So keep that in mind. There's box wines, I mean, Franzia, Carlo Rossi, stuff like that, which are great for cooking. Now, this pot is called a Rondo, and Rondos are short and wide. They're fantastic for braising. I use Rondos for... The majority of my braises, uh, they're really important because they do, you can get a lot on the surface area and build and still put liquid in here, but it fits very conveniently in your oven. So because the short ribs have so much fat, we're not going to add a lot of oil to the bottom of the pan. Um, this is important because they're going to release a lot of grease as they cook, a lot of oil. So just a light coating on the bottom and you want to preheat your pan. I have this over a medium high heat. I'm going to let this preheat for several minutes so I know the metal expands and the oil has kind of been absorbed in every little nook and cranny. So now a great test to see if your oil is ready is you just touch your short rib in. And you should hear an initial sear, a char, a sizzle, everything we want to hear in here. So I'm going to take this and place this down. And I don't want my pan ripping, ripping hot because I don't want a bunch of pop-ups and frying and flaring and fire. So I'm just gonna start this, like I said, over a medium high heat. And when I place the meat in the pan, I wanna make sure that there's space in between all the cuts. Now what the space is gonna do is allow steam to escape. You see all this steam coming out? As the steam escapes, the sugars then have more of a chance to caramelize. The more caramelization you get on your meat, the better flavor your whole braise, your sauce, everything is gonna have. Now what's gonna happen is your meat's gonna start to bend and buckle. You kinda wanna just give it a little press down. And what that's gonna do is just kinda touch the center part to the pan to make sure it's continuing to caramelize. Now these short ribs take about eight, nine minutes on each side to get a great char. By our second, third round, it's gonna char a lot quicker because you've already built up a fond on the pan and the pan's well seasoned. 
So a great test is come in here and just lift this a little and you'll be able to see, is there enough caramelization on this short rib? I would say no, I'm gonna let this go a touch longer. It's starting to get some really great color. There's a lot of blonde spots. And like I said, the more color you bring into the short rib, the deeper flavors, the more beefy flavor, the best, the better your final result on the short rib is gonna be. So our first one is looking fantastic. You can see all this caramelization, all this color. I'm gonna pull this guy out and start adding more in. You don't have to wait until your whole batch of short ribs is done. You can continue to add if you're doing a big batch like this as you go. And it's crazy, but you can see how much steam escapes as this is caramelizing. Like I told you, that's why you want the space in between the meat because all this moisture, all this vapor needs to go somewhere. And if it's sitting here and all the meat's piled up, it's just gonna go into the meat and into the crust and hurt that caramelization. So similar to what we talked about with the short rib actually caramelizing, we wanna do the same thing to the vegetables. We're gonna break them down slowly and stew them down. Let those onions and, and carrots kind of soften and bring out those natural sugars. And that's the most important step in this happening and taking its time. Because the slower that this goes and the more we let it just kind of work, the deeper the flavors we're gonna have. And we want depth in our flavors when we're actually making this. So I'm gonna do this over the medium low heat uh, and as these, as these vegetables start to release liquid, uh, they're gonna actually deglaze the pan. Deglazing is where it picks up all this brown stuff on the bottom of the pan. This is known as fond. This is all flavor. So as the vegetables release liquid, they're gonna actually pick up those particles of flavor and help you be able to use them in the sauce versus them just sitting at the bottom of the pot and burning. Now again, this process takes some time, so you wanna actually just work it and let it do what it has to do. You can see here, uh, some of this uh, residual fond is starting to pick up. Now for my next party trick, I'm gonna add the wine. Like I said, you don't need an expensive wine, but I'm gonna use the majority of this bottle. And when I put this wine in here, I'm gonna turn this heat all the way up. I want this to start boiling vigorously and starting to reduce the wine down. Because this has so much surface area, this pot, it's gonna reduce down fairly quickly. The next step we're gonna do is actually add our short ribs, because our wine's reduced down by about half and really fortified the wine flavor. Again. Everything in a braise is about fortifying flavor because we're gonna dilute it with liquid while it cooks. So we wanna make sure that there's a ton of flavor. You can see the amazing color that's on these short ribs. I mean, it looks phenomenal. This is all, again, gonna add more flavor. So when I place these in the pot, I wanna make sure that they fit nicely. I'm gonna try my best to just have one layer of beef. Now, as I put my short ribs in the Rondo, I wanna make sure and do my best to make sure I have one layer of beef. I mean, that should have been my nickname in high school. But basically, um, when I add the liquid, I don't want it to be completely submerged and just swimming in liquid. I want just enough liquid to cover the short ribs. So at this point now that my beef is in, I'm gonna add the demi gloss, And I'm gonna add just enough chicken stock to cover the short ribs. Because again, you wanna remember, these short ribs are gonna give off liquid as they cook. They lose 50% by volume. So there's gonna be significantly more liquid in there when it's done cooking. And the whole point of actually doing this is to build the braising liquid that they're gonna be submerged in and cook in. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil, which is gonna cut our cooking time down significantly versus just taking it and putting it in the oven cold. Uh, that, that sauce then all still has to heat up before it starts actually cooking the short ribs. So bring it to a boil on the stove is gonna knock off a good 20, 30 minutes of your cooking time. Now this step is when I would normally add fresh herbs. If I wanted to add some rosemary, bay leaves, fresh thyme, um, anything that's, I want to perfume inside as it cooks. I don't do it too early because what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to muddle out and, and lose its potency and its fragrance. What we're gonna do today instead is do it when we're finishing the sauce and allow that uh, rosemary and that flavor to just kind of perfume and open up and give you a very aromatic very delicious short rib with a lot of depth and different flavors. So now that the sauce has come to a boil, we're gonna wrap these and throw them in the oven. So now it's onto the wrapping. And what I mean by wrapping, because this is a big heavy pot, we use a layer of plastic wrap and then a layer of aluminum foil. Now, if I'm doing this at home and I have my Le Crusades, which have big heavy lids, I'll avoid all that and just throw a lid right on top. And I'll link below which Le Crusades I use for braising short ribs because I actually love them. I think that they cook very evenly, they cook very nice. Uh, but to do this, you wanna make sure your pan isn't ripping hot. And that's important because you don't want the plastic to just kind of melt the minute you put it on there. 
We're using a food grade plastic, which allows us to be able to do this and use this in a cooking method. I'm gonna take my sheet of plastic and just lay it right over the top. And you're gonna see how it adheres immediately to the pot because there is heat and there is steam. So what this is doing is creating somewhat of a vapor lock on the pot, which is gonna keep all these liquids in here and help it kind of steam and cook very evenly. Now the next layer is aluminum foil. I love that sound. Uh, you wanna make sure your foil is nice and even and if you have a pot with handles, tuck it under the handles because what that's gonna do is keep it, as if you're using a convection oven and the fan starts blowing, it's gonna help keep that foil locked on. If we're using a standard oven, you don't really need to worry about this. Now that I have this uh, nice little petite bundle, I'm gonna place it in the oven. This is going in a 250 degree oven for two and a half to three hours. And we'll check it and come back a little bit later. Okay, so our short rib's been in the oven for about two and a half hours. Let's take a look and see how it is. Now, when you open up the package, you wanna be careful because it's gonna give off some steam. Oh my goodness. These smell incredible. Now what I'm looking for is just minimal resistance, meaning I could put my fork in and kind of turn it. You'll be able to see, put my fork in and it's gonna kind of just show a little resistance, but you can see how the grains are starting to break apart. That's a really good sign. That means that it's braised and it's tender. See that? So here's the absolute most important step. If you take this out of the oven and you pull the meat out of the juice and cut it and serve it, you're not gonna have an amazing product. You spent all this time searing it, and trimming it, and making the sauce. What's gonna happen is it's gonna steam out. You wanna leave these, these short ribs to rest in their juice, and that's really important. So the longer they rest in here, the more they're gonna kinda relax and reabsorb that juice versus me taking it out right now hot and it's just steaming like crazy. So I'm gonna put my cover on this, let this rest for about 20, 30 minutes before we take it out, and I show you how to finish a short rib. So now that the short rib's rested, I'm gonna take it out of the pot and I'm gonna show you how we finish this. So the next and final step is gonna be actually caramelizing this and reducing the sauce down to just give an absolutely incredible dinner. So I'm gonna ladle a good amount of this sauce and I wanna get some of these vegetables in here too, into this pan. And then using a kitchen spoon, I'm gonna put all the vegetables off to the side so I expose as much of the short rib meat as possible. And then I'm gonna just lightly baste it because I wanna make sure that the gloss, the sauce that it's been braising in, is covering the short ribs, because that's what's gonna help it caramelize. Now I put this pan in a hot oven for about 10, 15 minutes until it gets a great crust on top and that sauce starts reducing down. Okay, so what we see here for so far is caramelization starting to form, and that's because we took the sauce and kind of blanketed it over the top of the short ribs. And we're gonna do this one more time, because I wanna have a really, really great crust on top of this super tender meat. That's going to go back in the oven for about two, maybe three minutes just to lock in this ultimate crust. And then we're going to take the short ribs out and reduce down our liquid, finish this dish. All right. So now we have this final crust. It's got a really, really great texture, really great, uh, kind of like a char appearance. Take this over to the stove and let's finish this up because I am hungry. So what we want to do is take the short ribs out of the pan and just set them aside. We don't want them out of the liquid for too long, but we need them out so we can properly reduce this without destroying the texture of our short ribs. Now you wanna bring your sauce to a boil so it can start reducing down, but while it's boiling, take your spoon and try and just gather any grease that might be in this sauce because there's gonna be a lot in there because of all the intramuscular fat in the short rib. But we wanna start crunching this down. We wanna reduce this down until it's a nice, thick gloss. Now I am going to add some chives into the sauce and to finish the short ribs. So I wanna get these cut up right now. I'm gonna throw just a touch of the chives into here. Get some of that fresh onion flavor into the sauce as it's reducing down. So what you're starting to see here, the bubbles are gonna start getting thicker and the rate that it's boiling is gonna change. That's because it's removing liquid, it's removing moisture and the gelatin starting to fortify. This sauce is looking absolutely fantastic. So because of all the fattiness in the short rib and all the richness in the meat and the demi-gloss, 
this sauce is gonna get a very, very rich mouthfeel. I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to combat that and how to really just kind of brighten up the entire dish. Okay, so our sauce has thickened up quite a bit, as you can see. Now, if it gets too rich of a mouthfeel, too gelatinous of a mouthfeel, you just add a splash of vinegar, red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar. What it does is it kind of just opens up, it cuts through all that fattiness and really elevates the sauce. Now that our sauce is crunched down, I'm gonna take these short ribs and put them back in. And this is just kind of a marrying process because I want the short ribs to be nicely coated with the sauce. Take my spoon and just kind of ladle a little bit of this sauce on top of the short ribs to give them a little basting and a little sheen. And now we're ready to plate up. So now we have these amazing short ribs. You can see how much that liquid's come down. It's time for us to plate these guys up. So I'm gonna take my trusty meat fork and put this short rib right here in the center of the plate. I can tell you that already looks great. Now, I wanna get some of this sauce and go right over the top. I'm gonna to kinda of push my vegetables off to the side a little bit because I want the short rib to be the star of the dish. But if you look at the colors and the textures on this, I mean, this just looks absolutely amazing. And these vegetables are sweet, they're delicious. Now I'm gonna finish this with just a little bit of fresh chopped chives to bring in a little bit of onion flavor and some nice green color. And there you have it. A beautiful braised short rib that you can make at home. All right, so let's give this a taste because I am excited and I've been smelling this all day and I am starving. So should just gently come apart. Look at that, that's amazing. Oh my goodness. It's so juicy and so moist, mm, but so tender. And the flavor in there is just unbelievable. Awesome. You guys better get on making this at home. I am going to keep eating. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will link everything down in the comments below of what tools we use, the recipes, everything. If you like what you see here and you want some more great content, hit like, hit subscribe, click the little bell for the notifications. We got a ton of great videos coming out. So everybody be safe, be happy, and I will see you soon.